he doesn't qualify. Uh, but thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Basi, uh, Mr. Darwala, Mr. Salimari, distinguished uh, uh, members of the audience. I note that the number is not a particularly large, but I can see the very high quality present here, and I'm very happy to be with you on the subject. Uh, I must compliment you, Mr. Kartike, Dr. Kartike, and for bringing the subject for discussion with a variety of this kind of things. Uh, escapes notice in, in, in general. And uh, you asked what's the purpose of these seminars. I think even if two or three people take interest to pursue them and then have some framework for understanding these issues and then brings it out of the open. Somebody on the website may pick it up, we don't know. And I'm sure uh, he is today in a position where he can initiate action. These things take time, of course, but I think that's an important part of it. Uh, uh, perhaps I didn't read the subject well, properly. I'm going to focus basically on the traffic side, road rage side, arising out of that. I think many of the things you mentioned in America, Germany, are available in India also in different forms. The local triggers are different, and as you said, uh, there may be other triggers in India. But a very clearly significant trigger in India for road rage is the uh, level of uh, uh, anxiety, the level of uh, frustration, the level of anger of most uh, people who use the road, pedestrians or uh, drivers or passengers. I think I, I'll focus broadly on that particular thing. Uh, Mr. Basi, what he say should not be taken as criticism. It should be taken as uh, the comments of a user, more in the spirit that, uh, and what I say is certainly going to transcend the traffic department or the police department. This is going to cover uh, the governance at large, one would have hoped that the uh, minister would have come requesting him to take initiative on that. It is in that spirit that I am saying, not as much of criticizing. So, so uh, 30 years back, I was in uh, Geneva. Uh, Sardar was there, who was ambassador to Geneva. Do you remember his name? Uh, uh, from 86, 87, before. Uh, uh, anyway, he was there. And one day he was in a crossing court. Uh, he got a letter at home saying that you have crossed the red light and uh, uh, your fine is X uh, francs. Uh, please pay. He also said, we know from the number plate also that uh, you are uh, you got a diplomatic license. So you are exempt, but as a good citizen, we hope you will pay. This is a letter, very polite letter. He wrote back saying, no, no, I am very, very cautious. And he was fairly uh, strong in his language. He said, clearly, the Policeman who observed me did not know what was happening. You must check the eyesight of your police people. So kind of fairly uh, strong language against the police force and said that uh, I'm a very cautious driver. I have never done anything wrong in my life and I never crossed the line, so to speak, on any matter. 24 hours later, he got this uh, envelope, just a photograph. And with, along with this beard, his face was very clearly visible with the cast number bit and the red light was crossing the red light. And immediately he paid up. The question I'm asking is, this was 30 years back. We talk about digital India. Are we now moving towards that? I live in a, uh, not far from a red light area, not red light area, <laughs> <laughs> not far from red light. And I find that uh, it is violated 2,000 times a day. 2,000 times a day. If it happens in one red light, I presume the number will be 2 million. And if you go all over India, it will be two crores a day. That's the kind of violation that are taking place. Even as if you have a six sigma, even if 25 people are caught, kind of a thing. Now, I think this is something important we should take note of. Our problem, of course, is that if they have the technology and the digital arrangements, the photographic arrangements, 30 years back there, we boast of all kinds of technology. There's no reason why 30 years later, immediately on the spot you get the number, go straight away on the computer. In fact, it should be handed to the computer. It should come to every person straight away. You should send the signals, etc., etc. I think that's the first broad point I want to make. The second broad point I want to make was that typically every time you travel in Delhi, I'm sure in other cities also, probably more in Delhi, as you said. Delhi is, Delhi is more unique than other places in India. There is a barricade. You, you, you can help up with the traffic of 20, 30, 40 minutes. You don't know what's happened think that there is some accident or something. Then you find a police barricade there. And four policemen are chatting in a corner 30, 50 yards away. There is nobody there. I am wondering what the statistics are. Has any thug been caught by this police barricade? 
has any difficulty being caught, and any politician being caught, who has been caught in disease uh, by, uh, uh, by this barricade, not clear to me, I was wondering. So I think uh, it's important to know, yes, if it serves a purpose, yes, I'm sure. And if it is does, the third broad point, uh, Mr. Basi, is, is a larger point. Uh, we have such technology. When this is standard, when four lane meets a four lane, it has to be eight lane for the first half of a long, then seven, seven, then six, then five, then four. Always, and it takes three for longs or four for longs for the eight lane to become. You go to any junction anywhere and then you fly over. You will now find four lanes here, four lanes here, there's a gap. So 10, 15, 20 minutes. Even at odd hours, 12 o'clock, any time, ring road, etc. Now, clearly, this is uh, against all basic principles of construction, etc. Why uh, we are not having this. Uh, <coughs> Uh, I think it's important that, so with the flyovers, that the traffic is probably even worse than the flyovers and, uh, and, and you see typically uh, in the evening, particularly Friday, Saturday evening, 6, 7, 8 o'clock, you know, that young number, Friday, that young number, sorry, sir, I'm, I'm seeing this as an observer. Happily, the person sits in a big SUV with a drink openly there. I see anybody you can watch, a drink openly sitting there. He daring anybody there come here and touch me. And then he is in the red light, he's, he takes the sip quietly and going. Now the point is, he's got a right to enjoy, but not the streets. I mean, he's a danger to others now. In many parts of the world, many parts of the world, they, can, they give people who are drunk one chance, but in, uh, no, no, no second chance. Drinking is an offense where the license goes, and the first offense they don't have, it does not have to go. <coughs> <coughs> India is a place where you do drunken driving and run away and you don't get caught, nothing happens to you. But in many, many other places, your license goes where you go. I think it's important that I think uh, he knows that uh, he could handle the situation either by a bit of bluster, uh, because he usually has a red light which he doesn't, uh, uh, you know, entitled to use, but he usually does use a red light without entitlement. A bit of bluster, or in the worst case scenario, pay a couple of hundred bucks. And I'm sorry, but this, these are harsh realities. As a citizen, I'm sure many of you are having the same kind of experience. There is this uh, truckers, uh, US truckers, I think it's called Truckers United. Like we have the weekly program here on TV, uh, in various uh, soap operas. There is the Truckers United program in the US in the channel that comes. It uh, talks of uh, you know, yeah, truckers racing on the Andes in Peru, another one in Alaska, and you know, icy roads, desert roads, etc. So they organized in India, in somewhere in Ladakh. So the truckers went in a group, 30, 40, 50 of them, went one evening towards Ladakh, right to Ladakh, so the race could take place there. The 30, 40 miles they went to Punjab, they paid it very heavily. Half a million, one million dollars kind of a thing, the participants. They unanimously said, we are not going further. This is too dangerous. <laughs> More dangerous than driving in Alaska or in, uh, in the ice caps, etc. It is much too dangerous. I mean, when you talk of rage, Everybody is on the road. When I sit in the car, I shiver. You know, sometimes I go like this, I go like that. Maybe, maybe I'm a little over sensitive. My, my, my point is not to criticize, sir. Please don't take it that way. I'm saying, I'm only saying that these are, uh, I've come to some of these schools now. Two other short points, I'll come to some analysis here. The public road belongs to the people of uh, people of India, not for private cars parked temporarily. Or when you go to any junction, I go to, for example, any TV studio, it's a public road, and every, all kinds of people have parked the cars there. What should take me two minutes, take, should take 20 minutes there. You go to any part of Delhi, any part of India, you go to any bazaar, you find people. I can understand this even to some extent in residential colonies, and fairly affluent colonies. I can't see why people who own four cars cannot pay 10,000 rupees uh, they should be charged, RWA should charge 10,000 rupees. Uh, in many countries, nearly every country, they have a very clear system where public areas are parked and he has a handheld machine and it's all computerized and he slaps the, you know, if he's wrong place, they say Tuesdays no parking on this side at all. Wednesdays no parking there at all. Certain areas no parking, all kinds of restrictions are there, it's all mentioned there. And deliberately they change it so that People don't park it there and go away for 15 days holiday. The, the, the other words, the two hour parking, six hour parking, 
there's nobody bothers at all about here. I think that these are all things, I'll come to some analysis of these. My analysis would be, we have done a lot of thinking on uh, railway travel, computerization of that. Traffic is an area where nobody has planned in an integrated manner, where you take into account the police, which is a very important part of the system, the urban, uh, uh, urban affairs people, uh, then the uh, other services. I can't understand why. If, if 25 departments are allowed to dig, the railways are allowed to dig, the, uh, uh, the telephone authority can come, the so and so. Why well, it should only be done with the local authority? Who here he say that if you want to dig somewhere to uh, draw a line or whatever it may be, only the authority you should pay the certain regulation, certain rule. You should say that you can do that. And once in three months they will together come and dig united railway. Pay pay the pay hefty fee to get the television line or whatever it is line etc. I think. Broadly speaking, we need a kind of uh, thinking apparatus here. This is Digital India. I headed a committee just now for bringing uh, electronic connectivity to, to the remotest village, two and a half lakh uh, panchayats. That means that village should be able to have 500 forms to be done there on the spot. In the small post office, they can do character forms. They can get all their money come from Dubai or from where or the other. Within half a minute, it comes into their account. We have no. We can't do it in Noida or Gurugram or in Delhi. We can't have that. If, and we are not thinking of digital connectivity to the remote kind of an area. And the policeman, handheld devices are not available. World class devices are available. You can communicate. You punch in the number. It is got tremendous capacity. It can take in 2,000, 5,000 numbers. So tremendous. So in other words, we have not used the digital side at all. Uh, in the uh, in the urban areas, and I think it is important because at one point the connectivity should be there. Somebody coming from Noida or from Gurugram, vice versa, into Delhi should not take advantage of the fact that he is registered in another state. There should be connectivity which speaks easily in terms of registration numbers, etc., etc., and the driving license numbers, etc., etc. It should be done much like we have not done uh, our land records have not been. Uh, I started the process in 1996 for land records to be, and do you know why it has not been done? 1996, I gave money to two districts in Europe, Punjab and two districts in Madhya Pradesh that the land records should be uh, digitized. Full money owned by the government of India. After two months I checked up, they said that they had good action, etc. Et and then one of the districts in Punjab, they, I asked that contractor, that person, why it is not happening? He says that the people from the computer company had gone there and in the morning the Dasada into adjoining rooms had put two snakes in each of the beds, <laughs> you know, to frighten, the, to frighten the computer company people not to come there. It is, it is not in the interest, uh, keep, it is not in the interest of the Dasada that his income is there, his revenue is there, his future is there. Uh, it's the same thing in the police department. I think it is important that at the lower level, no, they will not they will resist at all costs. They don't want it to be able to I just mentioned the little office, but I mean, it's a too broad point here. I'm not being specific here. I think this is, we should now use this digital connectivity thing, and it's a question of two to three years. <coughs> we can now bring a lot of rationality to that immediately. <coughs> Instant identification of the owner. Everywhere there's a great response. The first offense is 5,000 rupees saved. Second offense, the car is picked up and taken away to Alwar or Bharatpur. Uh, it costs 25,000 rupees to bring that car back. And this is happening in Geneva. They take the car away and take the car away about 300 miles away. And you can, then you have the contractor. You have to pay for the contractor who took the car away. It's on one track. And then pay for it to be brought back to your place. And third offense, you have to say your car is confiscated or whatever, the laws have to be changed, the rules have to be changed, or whatever has to be done, has to be done. And the first drunk driving offence, is a choice whether at that point of time the licence goes or not, in many countries it goes, this is, this is uh, one broad pattern. The second broad pattern is, we have, I think our roads are expanding at the rate of 2% per year, and our vehicular traffic is expanding at the rate of 8.5% per year. 
any simple arithmetic student will know. But give it 10 to 15 years, log jam will be there. One is growing at 2.5%, one is growing at 8.5%. Sooner or later, the log jam has to come there. The very elementary, elementary arithmetic there. Why nobody is coordinating? Why on the one hand they are encouraging cars to come, bikes to come, more and more, which also adds to the pollution on the other. I am why you know, you know, I bought a car today for 8 lakhs or something. If I had bought the same car, Sears, in Singapore today, it would cost me one half cross. They are very sure how many cars they want on the road. And we are, uh, we are a richer country than Singapore. I mean, uh, the per capita income. We are, we are treating ourselves as the richest country in the world, where the level of standard of living is about the lowest in the world. And, you know, there they are ensuring that the public transport the public transport is, is proper and therefore it is extremely important that they, that they should do that. The short point that I wish to make is that uh, there are many reasons for uh, road rage, etc. But I think it's important that uh, it's important that uh, I'm sorry if I'm no, you can No, I'm basically I'm done. So I really looked at only one aspect, I don't look at the other uh, inputs into road rage area. I looked at one major inputs. I thought that uh, this was my views here. This should not be treated as criticism. Should not. I'm only saying that remedies can come only if we know the problems and how they. And unfortunately, these are highly solvable problems. These are all problems where in a number of cities are solved. These Indians can do it. Indians probably do it all over the world. Indian companies can do it in no time, whatever. So. Probably. I think the probable key is it does not get the kind of attention or importance in the policy making levels. That this is an important thing to do. Once that the identification comes, we have an excellent administration. We can do it, excellent political commission, we excellent administration, we can do it in no time at all. But I think that the problem is to bring it to uh, the attention of our decision makers, and I'm very happy Mr. Basi is here. I thought, uh, please excuse me if I have been negative. Thank you.